Hello everyone and welcome to Africa's Future Leaders Low Roundtable. My name is Samantha Moisi, a law student and co-founder of AFL. Africa's Future Leaders is a student-led society created to help transform the mindset of African youth towards more pan-African ideas and uplifting ideas. One of the ways we do this is by organizing roundtables. We have so far had two roundtables, including this one, where we connect with distinguished and inspirational lawyers to help inspire us as we embark on our law journey. Please do follow, subscribe, and share this video to all your friends and family to help transform the mindset of African youth. to host Supreme Court Justice Mike Chibita, a trailblazer inspiring the next generation of judicial officers with his reputation of integrity, hard work, and fairness, as noted in his inspiring autobiography, Love Universe. He has been a state attorney, a private secretary for legal affairs in the office of the president, an executive assistant at the Uganda Revenue Authority, a high court judge, a director of public prosecution, and now, a court, a judge in the highest court of our land, the Supreme Court. His career is a roadmap for aspiring legal minds and a testament of what the Lord can do if you steward well the gifts he has given you. Today, under the theme inspiring the next generation of judicial officers, we will explore the dynamic trajectory of his career and the wisdom derived from his experiences. The best place we can start off from is Honorable Justice, if you could talk to us about how you ended up studying law, how you ended up being one of only 57 students in the graduating class of 1988. Is it maybe your parents encouraged you to pursue law, maybe a mentor? Thank you very much, Samantha. So, um, in high school, I went to King's College Budo and uh, the name of the school is important, not because of uh, historical facts, but because uh, when I got there, coming from a very rural place in Uganda, in Italia, my aspirations were to become a teacher like my dad. But when I got to Budo, I met uh, students whose aspirations were much, much higher. They were children of ministers, of diplomats, and uh, judges, professors, and uh, I started interacting with them, but I was also a reader, I liked reading novels. So as I read the novels, I enjoyed the uh, spy novels most. So actually my first uh, desire was to become a spy, <laughs> because I, I liked resolving mysteries and so on, yeah. But then I realized uh, I, there was no school for spies that I knew about. <laughs> So the next thing, best thing, seemed to be law. So by senior four, I had changed my mind about being a teacher, and uh, and I thought I I wanted to become a lawyer because it was the next best thing to my passion of spying. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and that's very interesting, especially uh, when you talked about how you interacted with children of uh, judges and professors, and yeah. now. You are the judge, yeah. and your wife yeah. is a professor, and your children yeah. are those children. So you can see how far God has brought you. Sure. And I think um, Irene would have something to add to that. That's so great. It's a little bit sarcastic when you say you wanted to become a spy, and then you ended up as a judge, which is really nice. Thank you. It's a great honor. But my question is in line with the law. As you see the current regime, most of the students enter law school with the aim of achieving the first class degrees. Mm -hmm. And when they end up not achieving the first class degrees, mm -hmm. they become frustrated and most of them even quit the practice. Okay. Yes, even before they go to LBC, they have already lost the zeal. Mm -hmm. Do you think a first class is the way to success in law school? Mm -hmm. 
the other things? <laughs> yeah, of course, the, the straight answer is uh, first class is the, not the only way to success in the law school or in life. Mm -hmm. So there are two things. One, for us, we were lucky that uh, they used to tell us that uh, in the law school, since it was founded, up to when we went there in the 1980s, I think it's, it had started like 50 years earlier, there had been only one first class. Dr. Kid Makuya was the only one who had got. So we knew first class was not something attainable. Mm -hmm. So we never bothered to say we'll get a first So it was never our aspiration. But of course we knew there were many people practicing law without first class and who were very successful. Mm -hmm. So I also learned the adage in uh, primary that uh, aim high and fail, then aim low and succeed. So it's good to aim for the first class. You may not get it, but that keeps you going. But just to tell you that, uh, no, you don't need the first class to be a successful uh, lawyer or legal practitioner. You just need to always work hard, do your best. Yeah, and then, uh, because, you know, it is not what you have attained in the law school that will determine your success. Success is a continuous pursuit. So you can actually get a first class in law school and then uh, become almost a failure in practice because it calls for different dynamics. And uh, it's not something uh, you attain once. It's not an event success. It is a process. Thank you so much for that. Success is a continuous pursuit. To succeed, you must ensure that uh, you are one of the best. And the best, I'm not just talking about grades, but uh, in a number of things. Uh, you must always aim to be among the best in whatever you do. Because every year, judges are retiring, professors of law are retiring, practitioners are retiring. So every year there is room for more people to join the practice as well. So once you are among the top, you always get. And top again, I'm not just talking about academics, but uh, a lot of other factors which we'll talk about later. And uh, my wife, who uh, you know is uh, in academia, mm -hmm. always tells me there are firms that ask her, please give us your first top five students. So they are always recruiting. Mm -hmm. The market is, seems to be bloated and all, but uh, employers are always recruiting. They are always looking for those best. But two, of course, you hear about uh, job creators rather than job seekers. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can become job creators. Oh, the easiest thing actually to do for a law student recent is to set up your own firm. Yeah, I, I think that is, I was telling somebody that judiciary, yeah. attorney generals, DPP, civil service, you have to wait for them to advertise. Mm -hmm. But uh, a law firm, you just get the qualifications and the requirements and you just uh, maybe need a bit of capital or innovation and uh, you are good to go. So that, that, is, that is a wide area. But the other thing for me, we've talked about changes that have taken place in the law, in the economy, but in technology. So whereas for us, the number of areas we could go into were limited, just the traditional judiciary, uh, attorney general's chambers, or DPP. Now there are so many areas of the law that you can branch into. I, I mean, academia, we used to have just one law school. Now, how many law schools are there? <coughs> yeah, so all of them, now they require more lecturers, more research assistants. So, uh, whereas it's true that the law schools are uh, churning out many, many students each year and many more than maybe the market can absorb, but the economy also has grown. Because even when we were in law school, we were only 57, as I told you, but they were still telling us that there's an oversupply of lawyers. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Really? yes, and they were saying there's an oversupply of lawyers, too many lawyers. So it seems this is an ongoing uh, 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 conversation. Yeah. So, you, as, as we mentioned, the market is not, uh, is not fixed, it is elastic and it can uh, accommodate you. just need to be a bit more innovative and creative and uh, competitive. Yes. 
My question is in line with, uh, with uh, what we, where we think go and what we think. Mm. Uh, when you're doing those schools, uh, the first question I want to ask is what what is that you do? Mm -hmm. And the straightforward answer is that I want to be able to get to the justice. Yes. I want to be here for the voiceless. Mm -hmm. That is almost the only answer. Yeah. Uh, so my line is when you get to the, my question is in line with when you get to the field, uh, you know, there are. Society generally brands lawyers as liars, but lawyers are clients. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because if we claim we, we have to stand for our client in you know, what's the answer. So my, my question is my question is back to right from your book, where uh, from what I read, uh, you upon joining King's for the book, you became saved and then you followed the light of Christ. Mm -hmm. So my question is, how do you maintain your principles? Mm. Well, pursuing your career because mm. in the field you want to face different scenarios. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. sure. Client comes with money and you have to. So money is a big principle. Mm. Mm. So as what I do is you use people and to one word, mm. mm. especially one from general science university mm. who is being told to be a Christian boy mm. to always be there for justice. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So there is something yeah. called the world view, world view which is based on values. Mm. I told somebody that you are a person to be most afraid of in somebody who doesn't have a value system because you don't know where you stand with them. The value system, in my case, which is Christianity, gives me a set of values and principles which I follow so that uh, when I come to you, I say I'm a Christian and, and you should expect that uh, I should behave in a certain way, I should keep my word and so on. So, and, and there are many world views, uh, different religions present, and, and that kind of thing. So, Christianity for me helped give me that world view and the set of principles and the fact that I can have a foundation on which to build. And uh, Jesus Christ, whom we follow, in fact, many say he was a first advocate because he was a crusader for justice, equality, and uh, treating people, you know, rightly and fairly. So, Christianity, in a way, is uh, very well expressed through uh, the legal profession. Because the things they talk about, uh, be kind, be fair, be just, uh, the, the very things that uh, espouse. So, it's when you talk about lawyer and liar, you know, first of all, when you do liar now, you are deviating from, from the Christian principle, but you're also deviating from the legal principles. So the people who say the lawyers are liars, of course, it is an overstated cliche. There are some people who uh, cause people to believe that that's true, but it doesn't have to be true. And I know that uh, there are many people who practice what they preach as far as the law is concerned and their value system. So the lawyers actually should be the, the, the promoters of uh, truth and uh, honesty and integrity because uh, we stand in between uh, the clients and, uh, and, uh, and the and justice representing, uh, which is again the parallel with the Christianity is that Christ is one who stands, is our advocate with God the Father. We always fall short, but uh, he says, uh, I've, uh, I've done this for them, I'm their advocate, uh, and so on. Yes, and uh, when you say there are many people who practice on your preach, you are one example of that. So you are one example of that that is showing up and happy. Thank you. Uh, Tracy, you can share your thoughts on that. Thank you so much, Samantha. Uh, my question is that for, for wanting to practice and want to become an advocate in yes. Uganda, yeah. he or she must have attained a postgraduate diploma yes. in the LDC. Yes. So, according to you, yeah. uh, do you think LDC do you think LDC is the right passage for any yeah. student to go through yeah. to guarantee yeah. success in law? Yeah. So Be so have you finished your question or you have part two? <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, as you are reading through your book, yeah. and I came across this part where you said uh, LBC is not that easy. Yeah. So, yes. 
in fact, you are understating the same issue, the single most difficult course I have ever done. And the, the statement still stands. Yes. So, is there a way that you think we can simplify it right now so that when we reach there, we can manage to go through it smoothly? So, one. The answer to the first part of the question is yes, law development center, because it is your qualification to be called to the bar. Uh, in many countries, you must go through the bar to become. And, and, and so I have dealt with many, especially female students who say they don't go to the <coughs> law development center. But number one, it is a question of discipline. You have started a journey. Where do you want to go? before you complete and yet the end is so close. Mm -hmm. So I believe anybody who studies the law should go to the law development center. Firstly, because it is, uh, you start a journey, you must complete it. <coughs> but two, it is the one which entitles you to practice the law. And so why would you want to come short? Even if in your dream at this point, or imagination, you think you will never practice the law and so on. Please study it and put it aside. I can assure you that uh, ninety percent you will like you will, you will need it because uh, even uh, jobs where you do may not require you to go to court, they will still say you have a diploma. They will use it to eliminate you. Yeah. So definitely you should do law said How do you prepare to make it uh, easier? One is uh, what you are doing now in law school is what prepares you. Because you, it's not anything new actually. It is just the procedural aspects of what you're studying. Criminal law, then you start a criminal procedure. How do you, you learn about bail, the theory of it? When you go to the law development center, you now have to draft the documents applying for bail for a client. So it is the practical. So first of all, you must uh, ensure that you learn the theory very well. And then you at all. The thing that helped me most at Law Development Center was being part of the group. Then we sit and discuss this one does, you draw the lots of motion, you draw the affidavit, then we meet and go through them. And uh, that always uh, is, is the best way. Group discussions and doing it as a group. But of course, the next thing, which used to be a given in our days, is uh, but these days are here, it's not attending class. It seems that attending class is optional these days because we had to attend class. <coughs> In a way, we were 50 and so you could know who was missing. But also there was not much else to do in those days. But when you were a student, class was the, almost the only thing to do apart from staying in bed. So attending class, there is no substitute for that. You have to attend class and once you attend, then uh, you can supplement with reading on your own and having the discussion. The good news is it's the hardest, but uh, it's possible. It has been passed by many of us, and uh, you definitely pass it. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. Just to say thank you, Justice Chivita, for your time and for your submission. Drawing from the previous questions, I'm going to add in just a bit and ask. Um, I spent my Christmas in the in the village uh, until PNG results came out. Mm -hmm. And on TV, the discussion was about our education sector mm -hmm. and commercialization. Mm -hmm. Law is an expensive course, and actually, most of the people as have been discussing who tend not to go to LDC, maybe so use that money somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So drawing from that, uh, in your book, you you really talk about your background, your mm -hmm. roots, and uh, your culture. Mm -hmm. um, to to add on that, I would like how do we? I don't know if it's I don't know if that's a word. You simplify the law, not that it seems it has always been an elitist because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of money, and we study in English generally, mm -hmm. but our country has different languages mm -hmm. and people of different economic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So we, at least now the LDC is in Lira, Umbarara, mm -hmm. and Kampala, but yeah. there are still some districts that uh, 
lacking some access to justice centers. So yeah. how do we as young lawyers who are trying to pick a mantle from what you set a foundation from try to simplify the law to a larger population? Thank you. The way I will answer that question is that uh, one of the philosophers said, I, I now forget whether it was Plato or Aristotle, says in life there are two things. There are things within your control and the things out of your control. The things you can control and the things you can't control. So as you are studying the law, it is there and uh, you are not likely to change that as a student or an aspirant. So your job is to get into the straight jacket of what the law is at the, at the, at the moment and study it. But when you get in, there are things you can do to, to change some things, simplify, expedite, make it more accessible. And uh, one of the things, as I mentioned to you, is uh, computerization. You know, it makes it easier, it makes it faster. Uh, you just mentioned the Law Development Center. Now there are three centers. I told you when we went to school, there was one law school. Now you tell me there are about six. This is making it more accessible. Of course, there are questions of quality and that kind of thing, but uh, these are some of them. So, because there are more law schools, they are, it's more accessible to more people. And because these law schools are spread all over, I think there's one in Bali, Fort Porto, Guru, and so on. So, this in itself. But there are many other things you can do. Legal aid to people who cannot afford, uh, law firms. Uh, for me, when I go to my village, there's always a line from people wanting legal aid. And I always say, uh, I think I, I could set up a law firm in my village and still have uh, a lot of business a lot of people, they may not be paying me one million, they may give me some money, of course, thinking about my younger self. But that is fair. Benjamin. Thank you so much, Honorable Justice, for the experience and for the next. And um, I want to ask a question here. So, we see lately that the legal profession is transforming and uh, we're seeing several technologies. You, you earlier mentioned something about technologies. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing things like artificial intelligence, blockchain technologies, which are doing away with you know, the more traditional ways of you know, handling legal work yeah. and literally changing the whole legal system. So my question to you is, how do you see the legal sector you know, transform before you know, say in the next 10 or 20 years, and how do you advise upcoming lawyers like us to prepare for that upcoming, you know, mm -hmm. shifts? Where, yeah. The technology, I think, is the fastest uh, evolving, and uh, you have to take advantage of that. Uh, for example, now we are on this phone, and uh, this phone, you know, when I start P7, you read the story of my my P7 results oh, yes, and the computer and the change of name. Yes. So there was, when we were doing P7, there was one computer here at Crested Towers, which was the headquarters of the Ministry of Education. And the, it, they said it occupied the whole floor, one computer. But they said its processing power capacity was like a thousand, so what you carry in your, in other words, was a big for nothing something. Mm -hmm. So technology has, uh, and so, we used to go in Makerere, there was a special place in the library called the Cage. So we had to go and get uh, laws of East Africa law reports, laws of Uganda, the, the copies, physical copies, then you would decide. Now, from here, you can just be in any library in the world, just here. You have, so I, I assume you all know how to do legal research on your phones and that you, apart from TikTok and all, you actually do <laughs> real uh, research. So that is a mind-boggling change which has happened. And uh, therefore, a lot more work can be done. I, I, I think you, you don't even, 
that place called the cage. So one of the frustrations would be there, there are some. Oh, I was looking for the appropriate one, but there are some strange people. We could go to a law report, East Africa law reports, uh, the case of expert Matovu, and they, they cut out the pages. You know, <laughs> so you go and it's just one book, and you find somebody has cut out. <laughs> so that's why I was looking for a word, but I forgot it. Yeah, I could. So now you. You can't do that, see if you want it. Either to disadvantage the other students or to be very selfish, to be the only one. Now the things are so, but I think more important than that, there are things that stay the same, whether in the technological era or in the era we were in. And I want to read for you some of them which are. And, and the bit of this, I said this in 2016, and uh, it did. Now it has come back this week. Somebody was saying, uh, just shared these wise words on 16th October 2016. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to read through the things that are constant, whether in this age, and, and those are the things you need. One, keep time. Say the right 10 minutes before or after. Two, this dress where you guys are smart. Okay. Number three, make the effort. Do the work, work ethic. Have you heard about work ethic? Mm -hmm. People go to work and they are not working. Number four, body language. You know, don't be dropping your head and your shoulders, resigned and all. Uh, number five, there for energy. You know, glad you are all talking energetically. Six, attitude. Attitude, have a positive attitude, and you have heard where you say uh, altitude is what matters. You know, mm -hmm. I can do it, I will not fail wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, seven, passion, have the passion for whatever you do. Uh, you guys are, this is not part of your, <laughs> your law school grades and all, but you are doing it and uh, you are blessed for it. You have come here, it's raining the whole morning. But I found you here. Be coachable. You can always learn something from everybody. Be it the sweeper. And uh, nine, do extra. Don't just say it's age five and four, forty-five or four, the nine you're working out. If there's work, you be the person who they say, if you want it done, give it to so and so. And then uh, ten, always be prepared. Um, I mentioned that uh, I sometimes take three hours to prepare for a 10 minute speech. Please be prepared. It makes my effort. When she got to me, I said, No, I need to know what are you going to ask me about? And do the research. I asked her before I came here. Once, well, uh, 20 years ago, 10 years to come, now they will be applicable across the board. So there are some things that don't change. And that, they will, that will give you an edge over uh, everybody else or make you as competitive. Thank you. Thank you for the I'm from Kalamuja, oh, one of the deepest regions sure, in the country. Sure, sure, sure. And like the DPP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, and I hope one day I will sit on that seat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. We begin by dreaming, wishing, and uh, aiming at it. Yeah, so. Yeah. This holiday, I went home to the yeah. for Christmas, mm -hmm. and I had a talk with a legal officer. Mm -hmm. I tried finding out the challenges they face, especially in a region like mine. Mm -hmm. And he shared with me, he shared with me that the main, one of the main issues they face is people not having knowledge of the laws. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that in Karamoja, you can tell someone. If you do this, if you go and report police, they will be on your side. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, no, 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 I can't do that to my husband. Mm -hmm. So people are really not aware of the available laws. Yes, and yeah. then also judicial officers are lacking, especially in Karamoja. Mm -hmm. I always do internal feed and morojo. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one thing I love doing. Much as I was still in my year one, I was happy that I helped people. Sure. But we would reach out to villages. Mm -hmm. We, be, we, we try organizing community dialogues and people are even afraid to come mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Report mm -hmm. cases mm -hmm. affecting them. So what 
some of the things that judiciary is putting in place to ensure that such problems are dealt away with cause. I'm sure the aim of the judiciary is to promote rule of law, ensure that everything is in place. What is being done to ensure that such things are solved? And then also, what advice, having looked back at your life, your career, and everything you're going through, what advice would you give your life? So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, good to hear from you. So, uh, the judiciary, not just the judiciary law society, we have uh, legal aid providers uh, and uh, LAPSNET, uh, Christian Health, Fraternity, we, we do legal aid. Uh, judiciary specifically, of course, you know they have uh, ensured that they have deployed judicial officers to the lowest areas to the most flatland areas. So now we have a G1 almost in every constituency. I think that's the goal. So bringing services nearer to the people. The second thing that has been done and can be done is court open days. Uh, each court has been having an open day, presided over either the chief justice or the deputy or the principal judge or the judge of that area. And part of it is to invite people to come to the court and learn and uh, not to be afraid, but first of all to bring them and uh, say this is a place you can come and learn, not uh, just be brought here when you are an accused person or when you have a case to complain. And this is a great way to, to be able, one, to interface with the people you are talking about, the needy, who will not afford the legal services or who are afraid to go to report, but it's also a good opportunity for you to go and uh, hear real life uh, challenges, legal challenges that people hear. And then it will actually mature you. It will change your perspective from just uh, learning, but also it will bring you closest to the people most in need of your legal services. The ones who can't afford it, the ones who are illiterate, the ones who even fear to go and report a matter. So this is how you, you, you need to align yourself. And I always tell your students, Please look for a place you can volunteer. I'm glad you volunteer with the with FIDA. Volunteer in the law firms, but look for a place that works in the country and get that experience. Be a balanced person. Get uh, all this. It's good to hang out with the elites. It's very good to hang out with the uh, Omotua ones here as well. Okay. Then you become a balanced person. Yeah. And um, I think for the next last question, we'll, <coughs> we'll save that one for the end. Because I think um, it would be a perfect to wrap up our discussion. Okay. So, right now, we can hear from Zambuga. Thank you for this opportunity. Well, uh, a number of critics have, have judged the quality of lawyers that's in the job market currently. Then the critics have poor quality and it's good on your day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having had a number of lawyers submit before you. Mm -hmm. First of all, do you think it's true? Mm -hmm. Second of all, what do you think we as upcoming lawyers can do to, to deal with this situation? Mm -hmm. I will begin with your second question, what can you do? And uh, I remember our professor, Jacob Frederick, I think he's now at the Uganda Matters University Law School. The question was asked, what can you do about peasants? And uh, the answer was, the first thing you need to do about peasants is to ensure you are not one of them. <laughs> That's the best thing you can do. So the thing about uh, low standard lawyers or practitioners is to ensure you are not one of those who can be described as uh, low quality, not qualified, not researching, and so on work on yourself. Uh, uh, charity begins at home, and this is one way. Just ensure that you are never categorized as mediocre, and uh, one of those who uh, go unprepared and do unresearched. Two, <coughs> it seems to be a trend that, uh, that uh, quality seems to drop over time in not just the legal profession, but uh, in most professions, most areas. That's why the saying is the good old days. Because it, it seems, I've observed that if you are not careful, it seems 
the quality of things, of professions, seems to keep dropping. And uh, we need to be aware of that and to do something to ensure that we are not the ones who actually deteriorate the standards of uh, the legal profession. I, I think it's uh, both yes and no. You get actually quality improving with the time, the number of people because of the research uh, engines we have. But also, there can be a tendency of people to relax because it has been done before, why reinvent the wheel and, and so on. And uh, uh, it all goes also to discipline. Uh, definitely, the young people are less disciplined than uh, their parents were. Uh, because many things, uh, development and uh, technology bring it. So where your parents used to walk to school for 10 kilometers, now there is a school one kilometer. So the discipline falls with that. I mean, the discipline to walk 10 kilometers, it has to be higher because you have to wake up much earlier you have to walk a longer distance, so you have to be resilient. It doesn't have to drop when you're walking one kilometer, but the tendency human is... Uh, so the, the way this works is when you have a function at a place like Serena, what has been observed is somebody coming from Kono will usually get here first. The person coming from Nakasero, because he knows uh, Serena is just here mentally, he relaxes, and the person coming from Kono knows jam, this and the other, so he starts the journey earlier. And, and I think this is a trap that you can fall into, because a lot of things have been done, you have many more authorities, we used to port a Queen's Paint, King's Paint, now you port from law report, Uganda law reports, the cases, so you can become lazy, you become uh, less competitive. <coughs> so uh, I think the medicine, uh, that you who are in it, you as individuals have to, to purpose to ensure that you stay disciplined and competitive. Uh, thank you so much, Honorable Justice. So, as we're going to wrap up, we'll just hear a question from Joseph and Sharon. Well, thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mrs. Sulita, for coming. Uh, my question actually, I have two questions. Okay. One is Slightly the same with Ravins, yes. where he said society believes lawyers are liars. <coughs> I would love to know from you, as a justice, mm. when when two lawyers come before you, yes, and you see that. I know feelings <coughs> are not part of judgment, right? <laughs> but yes. you feel what he has said is the right thing. But because the other one is more competent and he has brought up the cases right, and he has brought up the law right, and you think he's the correct one according to the law, but inside you, you feel judge, he's judging in a different way. Mm. <coughs> what do you do? You go and ask God, because <laughs> according to what you wrote, you wrote in the book, uh, whatever thing you felt you're not conversant with, mm -hmm. you always went and prayed about it with your wife. So what do you do as a Christian <laughs> justice? That is yeah. one. Another question is, the judicial has done a lot mm. in Uganda, we appreciate. Mm. But what is that thing that you think should be improved in the uh, The one thing that uh, they wish could be improved is uh, disposal of cases so that there is no case backlog. If we could improve on uh, the case disposal, that is hearing cases and ensuring uh, output is uh, greater than input so that out, our outbox is, uh, is, is, is very busy and our inbox is, is reduced. So, Disposal of cases and uh, elimination of case backlog. That, that would be the greatest dream. Uh, on the a thing about uh, about two lawyers, so I since have come to be told, and I believe that uh, 
usually when you are hearing a case, actually, you the judge, you are the one on trial. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the parties know the facts. Sure. Yeah, yeah, they have come, they know, they know who is lying and so on. Now you are the one to try and find out who of them is uh, telling the truth, who is uh, telling less truth through their lawyers. So, as, as you rightly say, it's not about feelings. Mm -hmm. But we are human beings, we have feelings. So you have to try and minimize the feelings and ensure that uh, you deal with, uh, with the issues at hand. Thankfully, we are in a system where if you, the lawyer is not saying everything, you can ask. You ask, clarify this point and all. And through probing and all, you, you should be able to establish who is telling the truth. And sometimes you bring them to the point of saying we are abandoning this point, we are abandoning this and go on. So through experience, you realize that uh, you, you, you have the lawyers, if you are feeling something, ask and say, on this matter, what is it, what is it? And with experience, you will be able to <coughs> make the lawyers abandon areas which are untenable. On the issue of prayer, so you know, prayer is a lifestyle. So you don't just pray because you have had a difficult case. Ordinarily, you should leave home when you are great, and when you are in court, you are praying. It is uh, continuous, so it's not something you switch on and you should switch on and off. I should say mm -hmm. it is something a lifestyle that goes with you. That uh, you are you are consulting, you are praying uh, through. Sometimes uh, you come to a situation, but you are already prayed. So, uh, but it is a continuous thing. But you know, there is this uh, <coughs> simplification of prayer and sometimes mockery of prayer as if uh, <coughs> people will say, <coughs> oh, you are a Christian, so you make your decisions after praying and uh, the answer is given to you in the night and that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, that is really a simplification and almost a mockery. But mm -hmm. you, you have to do the thing and then uh, go and manifest through what you are prepared for, uh, as they say, you know, God this part, this uh, uh, sends us in different professions, and definitely, God is a God of discipline. He requires us to do our bit, and uh, then He manifests through that. And, uh, I think that there's a verse in the Bible that says, "Faith without works is dead." Mm -hmm. So I think that speaks what you're saying. Yeah. I think the final question from Sharon. Thank you. Um, I had the honor of reading your book, Love by the Best. And right now it's a privilege to meet you. Thank you. Yes. So in the book, there was a point where you were offered two jobs. Mm -hmm. And you are not certain with the <coughs> Yeah. So yeah. considering the challenges that you face, the achievements you face, mm -hmm. if we were to go back in time, yeah. would you now be certain that you want to be a judge? And also, another question is, what would you advise those who would like to follow your footsteps? Do they necessarily have to go to the University of Law also? Mm -hmm. Oh, University of Iowa. 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 <coughs> it's a difficult name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I learned how, to pronounce, how they pronounce it after University of Iowa. Um, so, I, I have read for you some 10 things here which are which will work for you regardless of where you are, what school you go to, what uh, profession you practice. And uh, you know, part of it is career guidance. If I had been uh, uh, guided career-wise, uh, met uh, more people from different professions like you're meeting me, then I would have known uh, what being a judge is all about uh, and so on. Indeed, we have classmates who joined the judiciary immediately after after Law Development Center. So, and now you have uh, at your disposal the research mechanisms. You can research into any profession, into any area of the law. So, um, I definitely would advise people to be hardworking, to research, to look at the different professions uh, or the different areas of the law and see which one do they. I can tell you that I got into almost all the jobs I've been doing, uh, you could say accidentally. I really knew I wanted to be a lawyer, but I didn't know there were so many uh, avenues in the law. So, but one thing, uh, so you, you need to be open-minded 
and you need to research and talk to people in the in the field. Uh, one thing that helped me is uh, when I got into Attorney General's chambers, which I thought was for a short stint, I uh, was uh, very respectful to my bosses, the Solicitor General, Mr. Kavaksi now, uh, uh, practicing with the Kampala Associated Advocates. And uh, most senior people, lawyers, if you are teachable, coachable, and uh, disciplined, they will want to work with you and, and guide you. The problem with the young people, which uh, I, I, was, I had also at the time, is you don't know everything, you don't want to consult, you don't want to focus on what you are doing, you want to do this and the other and the other, and then the senior people, it becomes very difficult for them to, to guide you and uh, that kind of thing. So those are the things you need to be teachable, disciplined and uh, available. Yeah. Iowa, <coughs> again, it was uh, an accident, <coughs> but uh, it was a good experience. You see, what the thing about um, Iowa or any other place is trouble is a great education. What you learn if you go traveling, they cannot teach you in any school, even for four years. But just traveling, I traveled from Mutareja to Kampala, and it was a great education they could not have told me. I traveled from Uganda to Iowa in the US. Great education, nobody would. We had learned about the prairies, the pampas, winter. I could, nobody could have ever taught me what winter is like. You had to experience it. Right? And uh, different culture, you know, all black here now, you know, the only black person in a sea of white people, all those experiences, they grow you. And uh, if, if they don't kill you, they grow you, the experiences. So I would encourage you definitely when you get an opportunity, you travel, don't just be in your, in your own village and town. Get opportunities, it is much easier. Just travel it completely. The other thing, small thing which I learned was, <coughs> you know, many of you are, this doesn't, but I used to think that uh, the sky was up here and, uh, and heaven and so on until I got in a plane and then I realized the clouds were. But I had learned to, what is it, geography mm -hmm. and science, clouds, but I never knew that you could actually go above the clouds, but I had to experience it by getting it well played. That's why I'm saying travel is a great education. It has no substitute. That is where Iowa comes in. It was a great education for me. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Arambo uh, Jasit. For the sake of time, that leads, leads us to the end of our discussion. Um, I think it flew by very fast because you only have so many words of wisdom and encouragement. And I'm very sure that um, once this airs, it will genuinely help inspire so many students. And uh, you have very, very good questions. And I saw you are very attentive. You have helped me jog my memory into very, very many instances in the past and uh, engage with uh, topics. So it has been very, very helpful for me as well and uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, thank you for choosing the law it is one of the best things you can ever do in life uh, use it properly and again if there is any one thing you can take from me is the word discipline yeah thank you very much <laughs>